Welcome to another episode of In the Middle. Are you caught in the middle of two cultures? Um, in this podcast, we talk about uh, our experiences living in two or more cultures. Um, hi, my name is um, Eddie Minaya. I'm a creative professional living in the uh, Washington, D.C. area. Um, I was originally born in Peru, but I have lived here in the D.C. area since, uh, since I was 13. Uh, and today, um, I have a, a special co-host. Uh, she's a, a YouTuber from, from Denver, Colorado. She is uh, American, but her dad is Peruvian. So she's technically half Peruvian, half American. And in her YouTube channel, she kind of tells us her experiences about how it is to, to live as a, as a half Peruvian, half of American woman in Denver, but also in Lima, Peru. Angela Rose, Angela, welcome. Thank you so much, Eddie, for this wonderful opportunity. I'm so excited to be here. And thank you to everybody listening. I hope we have some really great conversation. Yeah, thank you. And, you know, I'm very, very happy that we're collaborating, um, Angela. And, um, you know, I have to tell you, I think I already told you when we spoke um, last week that I really, uh, you know, I, I really look up to you to a degree, the things that you do, kind of your living between two different countries and kind of it's, it's just amazing what you do. And so please tell me, tell me a little, tell us, tell everyone a little more about you, who you are, you know, where did you grow up? Uh, where do you live and, and where are you now? Yes, thank you so much for that. So my name is Angela. I was born in Colorado, which is in the United States. I have four sisters. And like you said, my dad is Peruvian. And so this podcast is perfect because I'm definitely in the middle between two cultures and I'm the middle of four sisters as well. So definitely in the middle. Um, and growing up, since my dad is Peruvian and my mom was American, there had been many, many instances where I have felt curiosity for my dad's culture and just the way that we did things in the house. And so I felt a lot of curiosity for Peru, mostly for the culture to understand why things were the way they were growing up. And so after high school, growing up, I had a older sister who always said that she wanted to travel mm -hmm. to Peru after she graduated high school. And that idea just sounded amazing to me. And so when I graduated high school, I decided to ask my dad to see how I could go and travel there just for a little bit of time. And I was originally planning to go for one month just to see and my dad recommended I go for six months so I ended up going for six months and at first it was difficult but after some time I adjusted and I wanted to stay and so ever since then I've been back and forth and I'm currently living in Lima again wow I de definitely admire what you so you technically moved without being outside the United States was your first time kind of going to Lima and moving there for six months? Exactly. So traveling on a plane for the first time, I didn't speak Spanish either. So it was oh, wow. uh, scary. <laughs> that, yeah, I bet it was because then, yeah, that makes it a little more even challenging, but I'm, I'm glad it's uh, where, you know, it's, it's taking you the route that you are today. Uh, Angela, please share your um, YouTube channels and your social medias for anyone listening so they can follow you and watch your videos. Yeah, that'd be wonderful. So my Spanish channel is Angela Rose. That's my main channel. And I just began an English channel, which is called The Angela Rose Show. And my Instagram is at Angela Rose with double O and double S. Gotcha. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so Angela, tell me something. When you you know it's uh, when you first moved to peru i guess when you say you moved there for the first uh it was for six months i'm actually maybe your dad was like just go for six months you know it's <laughs> it was it, how what were you expecting what were your expectations about peru you know the first time you lived there what 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 was your expectation and what was what you i guess the reality of things when you first arrived to lima 
So to sum up my expectations before going to Peru, I would say I honestly did tell myself don't have any expectations. I don't know what to expect. I don't know how the people are going to be. And so I really tried hard not to expect anything. Of mm -hmm. course, in my head I had this idea. I didn't want to have any expectations, but growing up, we would hear stories from Peru back in the 80s and 90s is a, a very different situation than it is now. And so I would hear stories about how Peru was back then. And so I knew that the current situation was different and it's not really a topic that we brought up so much in the house. So I wasn't really sure what to expect. And uh, I kind of had this idea of the movies where you see a kid playing soccer and it's an inspirational <laughs> film about how he makes it playing soccer. And so I imagined kind of things like that. Uh, but yes, I didn't know what kind of food they ate. I didn't know that they had such good food here. So yes, that my food expectations is... were... <laughs> Yeah, the food is definitely, yeah. um, it's uh, one of the drivers for, especially now, um, it was not, it was very different. And, you know, I, I lived in there in Peru until I was uh, uh, 13. That was in the 80s, late 80s, when I moved to, uh, when my family moved to the United States. So I lived through some of the, of what you're describing, of what Peru was in the 80s, from uh, inflation to terrorism to uh, it was uh, very different than what, what it is now. And I didn't go for many, many years after I came here. And then I went back and it was just like, wow, it looks, everything looks so different. And now I look at uh, Peru as a, as a different, more of a, a destination for me, at least I see it more of as a destination for uh, culture uh, and to, and for fun <laughs> and the food, of course. Um, so it's uh but it's definitely different than it was in the 80s and the 90s so <laughs> so do you think when yes. you know are, are people friendly yeah it's quite impressive how much yeah go ahead i was just saying that it's a uh, incredibly like spectacular how much peru has progressed and has uh, great places to visit great tourist locations and it seems pretty safe as well yeah and that's part. <laughs> and that's good especially you know you're um, you're a, a single woman and living by yourself you're young so yeah i'm, I'm it is safe I, I i feel safe too when i when i go there uh just like any other country you have to be cautious of certain places but for the most part i feel also very safe when i'm there um so let me ask you angela are do you think people are friendly to you when they try you know they try to help you or do you think sometimes they try to take advantage of you when let's say you don't speak Spanish at all and they think you're just American you know una una gringa más you know I hope you don't get uh, offended by the word gringa but you know I do you think people <laughs> treat you differently because they think oh she doesn't speak you know Spanish yeah so you're saying that it sounds kind of vulnerable to not be a native speaker of the language and such is that right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So in my experiences, I found that everybody has been very friendly and helpful. And when I try to speak to them and they don't understand what I'm saying, they always try to understand. And usually I find the biggest difference when I'm speaking to somebody one on one versus when I'm speaking in a group, because when I'm speaking to somebody one on one, I feel that they try harder to understand what I'm saying. Whereas if I'm talking in a group of people, they talk within each other. And then maybe I feel like, oh, they're making fun of me. But actually, they're just talking to each other and uh, just c continuing the conversation and that's when the biggest barrier happens is in group settings because mm -hmm. it's harder to jump in the conversation and all of that but typically people try really hard to make me feel comfortable and make sure that i am understood and so that's been really nice 
That's good. Um, you know, it, interesting. You you bring that point up because my um, I, I think I mentioned to you, my wife is is American. She's a very progressive American, but she does not speak Spanish or very, very, very little. She knows about the food, she knows about the culture, but she doesn't really know Spanish well. And when we are in a group setting, um, she feels sometimes left out because even though my family have has been in the United States since the '80s, most of them, you know, most of my kids and the kids' kids, whatever their first language is English, but everyone speaks English for the most part. So, in this case. Um, for her, sometimes she feels left out because everyone starts speaking Spanish, even though she's like, why can they speak English, even though they because they do. But it's not that they don't want to. And sometimes I feel it becomes more of a, you know, when you speak a language like Spanish, you can specifically in this case, Peruvian Spanish, which is, as you know, is a little bit different. Every country is a little bit different in, in Latin yeah. America. You know, you use slang, they use this and they use that and they can relate. And that's how sometimes that's how our our, the, our Latino culture is kind of being around family. So yeah. sometimes when you speak English, you kind of break a little bit of that culture, you know, culture, I guess, differences between them. So sometimes I try to make her understand. Now, you know, she chose to marry me. She knew what she was getting herself <laughs> into from the start. So the differences, you know, that's. The big difference with her but um she's been she's trying to to learn more spanish she understands it more than uh yep. than before so hopefully uh eventually she'll be able to speak more um you know and for everyone listening um if you like this content please don't forget to subscribe um this podcast you will find it in the uh, apple uh, podcast and uh, google podcast and also in spotify if you do a search um with the uh, keywords um are you caught in the middle of two of two of two cultures? You will be able to find it. Um, you know, and uh, Angela, in my last episode when I uh, of the podcast, I talked about how uh, people, and I'm talking about here, people in the United States, sometimes feel uncomfortable when they hear a language that they can't understand. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be Spanish. It could be, you know, Arabic. It could be Portuguese, etc. But some people feel uncomfortable um you know to the point that some people might even say something um you know and i have experienced this myself you know people saying something like we are in in america and uh you should speak english because that's the language that, that we speak and yeah. you know interesting enough um today this morning i was um i had um uh to help my mom uh renew her her driver's license so i took her to the dmv in the morning and uh, everything went fine. But as we were walking out of the DMV, there was this couple at the DMV that were uh, Hispanic, a Hispanic couple, a man and a wife, and they were speaking to them in Spanish. And right next to them, there was this older uh, Caucasian uh, woman that mm -hmm. she looked very, I mean, her body language, I don't know if she didn't say anything, but her body language, her face, her expression, her energy was really, I don't like the fact that you're speaking another language. I kind of want to move away from this chair, but I really can sort of, you know, and that to me, and again, I'm, I'm somewhat reading on her energy, her, her body language, et cetera. But that's kind of what I grabbed from, from where I saw this morning. So True. that I think it's happens great. sometimes more than, than we think. Wow. Um, go ahead. So you said that this happened this morning. That <laughs> Yes, that happened this morning. Yes. Wow. That's yeah. Sad. That happened this morning, yeah. And you know, it, sometimes it's um, it, it it's just uh, I'm very aware of certain things here in the United States um, that um, I have to do. Um, for example, I always go out with my ID. I do not leave the house without my driver's license. No matter if I'm going running or if I'm going to be driving or if I'm going to be a passenger, whatever, I always take my ID with me. And that's, you know, unfortunately, I, you know, if they have to pick between A and B and somewhat of profiling, they're going to pick me first. My mm -hmm. wife, on the other hand, when, you know, and I've told her all the time, where is your ID? Oh, I don't know. I, I left it at the house. You know, she has these perceptions like, well, I said, what if you get pulled over or what if they ask you for your id she's like well I'll tell her what my name is yeah and you know what it might be enough good enough for 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 someone to say well yeah that's that's okay well let me look you up yeah <laughs> you are here's your picture yes thank you 
but for me it will be different because I, you know, I, I don't look、uh, Caucasian. I am,、uh, you know, I'm, I'm a Hispanic man. So like, and I'm a man. So that makes it even more of a, a target.、And、I'm saying that, you know, I, yeah. I mean, and when I was younger, it has happened more to me than it does it does now. But because of that, I've learned lessons such as, as I'm describing. I never leave my house without my ID, and if I do, I freak out. And I will <laughs> drive back 15, 20 minutes to get my license to go back and get it. Oh my it gosh! It. What a <laughs> hassle! And in Peru, it is obligatory that you have your license with you. It's not necessarily a driver's license, but everybody has an identification that you must、mm. carry with you. So I can see how that is natural. Maybe that's another way. Yes,、yeah, so、like maybe a cultural thing、uh, that I want to always make sure prove who who I am with not just saying what my name is, but more of <laughs> giving、Where、you something proof. Something happens to you.、ID. Yes, they have to know who you are. <laughs> yes. So you know, in your YouTube videos,、um, there's one video that I mean, your a lot of the, your, your your content. Uh, as you talk about your, you know, English and and the difference between English and Spanish and the difference between all the two different cultures, between the, the Hispanic culture or the Peruvian culture and the American culture,、um, you even you had a video with、uh, you created a video for、uh, about speaking Spanish to your friends that didn't speak、um, uh, Spanish. But the one that grabbed my attention、uh, is kind of the opposite of what I'm describing to you, and、yeah. that's that. Um, you had a, a you recorded a video. You created content that was called "Speaking English in Peru: Will I Survive?" That had three hundred and thirty five thousand views,、um, and it's kind of the opposite of what I'm describing, where you're we're trying to speak English in a non English speaking country. So,、mm-hmm. you know, how do people feel when you when you speak a foreign language in in Latin America, or in this case in Peru? How do You know, do people more surprised, or was there anything that surprised you when you were creating that content that maybe is not in your actual YouTube video that、um, the, that surprised you? Yeah. So you were explaining how when Americans hear a foreign language, they're just I don't know what you're saying. Please stop. <laughs> you're scaring me. In <laughs> Peru, my experience was very different, and it's actually quite interesting. Because what I have found from doing this video, which was quite an interesting experiment, was that people do try to speak English to me, even if they have a very basic level of English. A、mm-hmm. lot of times, if I go up to somebody speaking English, they won't reply to me in Spanish. They will try to speak English to me, and、uh, that is something I never knew before I traveled outside of Peru. How universally spoken is English, and so、mm-hmm. that was very surprising. And so I think when I go up to somebody random, it was so much fun, and that video was just so exciting to make.、Um, I think I would make people kind of nervous because <laughs> they're like, "Oh no, I haven't studied English, or I don't remember," and so they really want. To speak English with me, and so I think they get nervous, and I also feel that in more normal situations, when I am just relating to people here as friends and stuff, I do feel like it's my job to speak Spanish to them. But、mm-hmm. if I didn't speak any Spanish, I find that a lot of times people here will try to speak English to me. <laughs> wow. Well, that's a.、Uh... You know, it's I I watched your video and there was the、um, there was this I think was he was a security guard at a place and you you were saying things to him like you know I I like you or I like you or I want to steal you I can't remember you almost like you were flirting with him and trying to see what if he understood anything of what you were saying and all he kept answering to you was like、uh, you know in Spanish. No hablo español, no, no, no. no hablo español. You know, so which is, you know, he was saying, I don't, I don't, I mean, I don't, no hablo inglés, no hablo inglés. I don't speak, I don't speak English. And it was, you know, it was、um, kind of interesting to see what people's reactions was when you when you did,、uh, and it, you went across all different ages, from someone that was young to、so、someone that was older, and everyone's reaction was very.、Um, Very much the same, but it is, you know, it's interesting. You say English seems to be、uh, such a 
a wide world, a spoken language um, that a lot of people around the world learn it as a second language. Because mm -hmm. they learn it as a second language, I think that's also part of the reason why Americans feel that Uh, and when I say Americans, I'm counting myself as an American because even though I was born in Peru, I, I grew up here and I'm an American citizen. I vote. I care about everything. So I, I feel like I'm stuck also in the middle, too. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, when I've, I travel abroad and not just um, South America, but when I've traveled to other continents, it feels like everyone speaks English as a second language. It's like interesting to know so i think that's the expectation from americans it's like well i'm gonna go to let's say morocco which is where i went this summer i don't speak you know arabic so i'm just but i i know everyone speaks english or the first thing you 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 ask when you go to countries do they speak english you know yeah. because you you think that they, well they, if they do then you know i'll be able to to get around um I went to Germany a few years ago. Uh, my wife and I was, uh, uh, she's actually German. Um, her dad is German. Uh, she was born here, but her dad is German. So she's half German and she has a very, very German first name and last name. Uh -huh. So we went to this very small town in Germany. Uh, and when I went to the stores, people looked at me like, because I, I look very different. She blended right in with yeah. everybody else, even though she uh -huh. speaks no, no German at all. But I, you know, people looked at me like, wow, he's, he must be from a different, you know, from a different place because he's not from here, mm -hmm. but the older people, and, but everyone spoke, spoke, uh, English, all the German, a lot of them did, unless it was someone that was older then likely they didn't because they didn't, yeah. I think it's more a progression that, um, uh, countries and around the world have started to mm -hmm. know, to understand that English is more of a, a language that it should be spoken and you know as as you know if you go anywhere around the world now if there's a country that speaks two completely different languages likely what they're going to try to speak it's english so i think that's part of the reason why as americans we expect you know to speak english wherever we go and perhaps yeah. that's also why some people feel somewhat you know uncomfortable mm -hmm. when they hear another language here in the united states because they want you to 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 learn or to speak English. Um, yeah, and definitely. Um, a point I was uh, would like to add to that is it seems sure. like the majority of the music, the movies that we listen to in the United States are American singers, or if they're not American, they're Canadian or even <laughs> British. And so everything we listen to is we're surrounded by English. And uh, when I came to Peru, it's as if I was opened up to the whole world just because of how open Peru is to so many different cultures and the diversity of mm. movies, not just movies, but music and the food and just how much they hear of other cultures. You know, I think Squid Games was one of the first really big series that was in a different language that everybody was watching it just seems like here in peru they watch and listen to music in italian or french and just from my experiences it seems that they have more of an interest in learning a bunch of different other languages besides english as well yeah um it is you know almost here in the united states because we we hear we we expect people to know and understand english i think that's the reason why we become a little more lazy and learning a second or a third language but in other countries i you know this past summer it was even more of an eye opener when i i there was people and that spoke two three languages and these are people these are that work at a at a, at a small little store that they likely had no you know and i'm i'm you know i'm, I'm at this point i'm guessing but you know uh -huh. probably they didn't go to school to learn the language they just learned it by by the people that the tourists is to stop by and eventually they picked mm -hmm. up words and things that started to make sense and then they mm -hmm. learn you know more than one language it's just uh, yeah. amazing and you know i was speaking recently with a, a friend of mine about the languages she was going to she's going to teach a class in the middle east about mm -hmm. um user experience for three months And one of the things I asked her, she spoke Arabic and she said, no, she said the class is going to be given in English, so I'm fine. 
Um, uh-huh. And, you know, we started speaking about languages. And one of the things I remember her asking uh, or telling her is that if I probably what if I didn't if I grew up here in the in the United States from the time I was a kid and I never learned Spanish, maybe I'd, I would never have been able to be bilingual like mm-hmm. I am now. You know, I see this uh, with my kids. Uh, I have two children and they're older, but their their Spanish is 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 very um one of them is okay, the other one it's it's not as good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so it is um you know, I think it's just it becomes I think it's because we are we get so comfortable with knowing mm-hmm. that people are going to understand what we, you know, understanding because they're going to speak English. Yeah, so you feel like it's kind of a choice. You can choose if you want to indulge in a language or not. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, uh, you know, I in the future, when maybe I'm retired, I would like to learn a third um, to Mm -hmm. to know how, you know, and I always had like uh, I took French in in high school and I learned. I think I was getting good at it. But, you know, it's been so long that now I, I don't remember anything. (laughs) <laughs> the times I've been, I've been to France, uh, the times I've been to France, I try to speak my very little uh, French. And then I ask, do you speak Spanish or English? <laughs> you know, yeah. and that's because I, I can't care, you know, because I don't speak it as, as, as much. It's always easier to just default back to your most comfortable language, for sure. And people forget or don't realize the significance of speaking multiple languages and just how important the language that we use is or yeah i agree a hundred percent and also you know i think here in the united states we um some people you're not you haven't been really exposed to different cultures maybe where you live um you know if you go to big cities like new york city la miami i'm sure you were exposed yeah. to a lot of different languages and cultures but if you live in a small town in rural America or in the mid, you know, maybe in the middle small town in the Midwest or in the South, you know, it's a little more difficult. You only know, you know, African-American and you think Hispanics is all about like uh, Mexican, you know, being because that's kind of all, you know, you know, you mm-hmm. go to a Hispanic restaurant, that's Mexican restaurant. Yeah. You know, you go to, you know, uh, a Asian restaurant as a Chinese mm-hmm. restaurant because that's even though it might be Thai food, uh, yeah. and, you know, that's also, I think, comes with uh, sometimes with and if your parents give you these values and not necessarily that is their fault. It's just where where they grew up and how they grew up. And it's I think it passes on to the next generation. So I think education mm-hmm. at some point it help it would help to kind of being able to evolve for um for our our culture and for our generation and for the next generation to come to be more progressive and to be able to be more uh included into different cultures and being able to understand it and i'm sure you know i really see the united states being in 20 30 years from now being such a even a more diverse and a lot of the things that we're talking about today being much more resolved than they are than they are now yeah Definitely. And uh, something a little silly to add to that is it just seems like Latin people tend to have more children than Americans do. So <laughs> it just seems kind of like the, the Latin population is definitely growing. So it is, it is, it is. Um, yes, that is true. Uh, it is, uh, you know, the, the children is different children, you know, and my and the, sometimes since you have him young i i did um so i i'm a, actually my younger son it's uh has a son so i'm technically uh you know even though i don't like to call me myself a grandpa i'm still really young <laughs> but you know but because he's had him young i had him young now it's you know that's just how it is so angela you know now tell me you know being an american and you the you were raised here in the united states um what did you you see? And I think we, we touched base on a few of the things, but what do you see as being more of the significant differences in culture between American and the Latin uh, and Latin American people besides having a lot of children? <laughs> <laughs> um, to put it quite simply, the biggest difference I have noticed is the food. <laughs> and it sounds so simple. Oh, yeah, your food, you know, you just eat it real quick. You don't even think about it. But 
the food impacts our daily life and how we do everything mm -hmm. and the way of cooking the way of gathering to eat the ingredients we buy how the whole country imports and exports and just the whole relationship with food i found is so different and so enjoyable in latino america yeah uh... it makes for different habits Yes, it sure does. Um, things in the food in Peru, like I mentioned to you earlier, it's like that's the first thing that comes to mind. It's like, where am I going to go eat? You know, <laughs> where are my where are my favorite spots that I'm going to go eat? Uh, and, and all my family, that's all, you know, that's what, when they go to Peru. It's like, okay, I'm going to go eat here and then I'm going to go eat here. And it's like everyone has their their little already, uh, you know, their their plan or where they're going to, to go. Um, Yeah. So when you when you live in Peru, tell me what part of the American culture or the things that you grew up with you bring to your to your daily life and routine, uh, or do you kind of entirely switch out to be more of a just in the Peruvian mode and try to live like everyone else, uh, trying to submerge yourself onto the culture? Yeah. So there's so much to unpack with that question. I think that. Have you ever heard the quote, when in Rome, do as the Romans? Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> I find that that's the most enjoyable way to go about things. So when I'm in Peru, it's important to be able to adapt and to be able to function as a Peruvian in order to be a part and participate in everything because if I try too hard to stick with my own culture and my own way of thinking then it clashes sometimes especially like you're living here when I'm living here of course and so um, a small example of this is uh, my coffee I love to drink coffee I drink coffee every day and so when I'm in the U.S. I put caramel and creamer and stuff <laughs> and so that's a daily thing I do every day and um, here in Peru they have different types of like you would put like condensed milk and so I spend some time trying to go to the stores and find the same caramel that I buy in the U.S. but I can't keep that doing the same thing and I have to adjust and drink my coffee with condensed milk, which is also really good. So I find ways to use what things they have here and enjoy them, if that gotcha. makes sense. <laughs> yeah, well, coffee, you know, that to me is also, that's how I start my day. Um, I'm trying yeah. to think when I go to and Peru. Another... Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Go ahead. Another thing I was going to say is that a lot of times uh, the American mentality is, that, oh, they have this bungee jumping place. Oh yeah, I'm gonna go, I'm sure it'll be fine, you know? And a Peruvian, they always seem to be more cautious. They're yeah. careful. And so <laughs> it, it is important to try to bring on, to find my inner Peruvian and live yeah. like a local. That is so, so true. What you just said about being over cautious about something, because I, I carry that myself even now when I do things or I'm about to do things or, you know, like you mentioned bungee jumping, you know, I will feel that if I will do it, I will be that one person that the rope breaks and <laughs> fails. You know, same with like, you know, skydiving, I will feel that will be that one case in oh. you know, a million that will, the parachute wouldn't open. And I think that's kind of how I was raised and how I was brought up and having that kind of make sure that, you know, you're safe. And um, something so. so interesting to add to that is it seems like the parent to child relationship is different in the Peruvian culture that the parents are sometimes more protective in certain ways, as opposed to American parents that are not. For example, a Peruvian parent would be like, make sure you put on your jacket, make sure you have snacks and all these kinds of things that an American parent wouldn't worry about. And so it's a lot of thinking ahead and preparation as a Peruvian. I feel like they're always prepared and plan yeah. ahead. And you know, I, I carry that some of, some of that to my with my kids, I think, 
I being over cautious and sometimes I know it feels like it bothers them, but you know, it makes me feel better about it. But my, like my, my dad passed away years ago. So, but my mom, um, she also has what you just kind of described. Um, you know, even like a few months, it was just a few weeks ago, I went out with some friends and I told her, Hey, I'm going to go out with some friends. Cause I tried to give my, a call to my mom every, like every night just to say, how you doing? How's everything going? And then, um, oh, a, a, that's wonderful. Oh, thank you. And then a couple of weeks later, I went out again with another, a few other friends. Uh, and we're talking about going out for a few hours, a couple of drinks, you know, things that, you know, I'm, I'm a re yeah. responsible guy. I take an Uber going there, even though I'm only going to have a couple of drinks and come, you know, it was just more of a social thing. People I haven't seen in a while, but my mom was telling me and giving me crap when I spoke with her. She's like, why are you going out again? He's like, are you having a drinking problem? Are you drinking again? I'm like, mom, I had literally like two drinks tonight. I, this was oh. like, last time it was like two weeks ago. I barely go out as it is. Um, and then she went and told my sister the same thing. Cause oh. I, I have an older sister. And then my, you know, then my sister was telling me, I was like, oh my God, my mom just told me this. It's just like, she's worried that you're drinking. I'm like, oh my God. You know, it she became completely, a whole thing. A whole scandal. Eh, eh, yes. <laughs> un escándalo grandísimo porque yo estaba saliendo todos los días. You know, this is, that was in her mind. That was that I was going out every day, even though that's obviously that was not the case. But that's just how, I think that's part of the culture has how they, you know, they, they they were raised and that's how they also are, are kind of their kids and i still have some of that with my children but maybe yeah. not as much like my mom <laughs> mm -hmm. um so um to our listeners again if you like this content um don't forget to subscribe um we are in um, this podcast you will find it in the um, apple podcast or the google po podcast or spotify if you look for the for the words uh, are you caught in the middle of two culture you'll be able to find it um so Angela, tell me, how hard is it now to adjust to the American culture when you when you're coming back, when you're coming when you're coming home? It's very easy to adjust when I come back home. It's seeing my mom again, seeing my sisters, seeing my dog. So it's exciting and it's always a little surprising to hear the language again and go to Walmart drive my car it always feels so different to grab the wheel it's just the place where i was born so it's really going back home you know to my mom's house is where i go when i go back home so it's just mm -hmm. it's comfortable being there so it's very easy to readjust i always have to kind of get the wheels turning again start seeing mm -hmm. people that i haven't seen in a long time and get back into a routine which can be difficult like always but yeah it's a part of so, life yeah and the, so do you will you ever consider moving to peru permanently this is something <laughs> i've been like uh, thinking about and permanently that's definitely a like a big commitment big i mm -hmm. i could see, i do see myself living here i do see myself always coming back to Peru. Okay. Yeah. And uh, kind of circling back to what we were speaking a little bit earlier about languages and English and Spanish. Do you have you ever felt embarrassed um, here in the United States when you are speaking Spanish among people that are your friends that maybe don't speak uh, Spanish or other people that just don't understand the language? Yeah, I it's interesting because I don't know what happens to me, but when I go to the U United States, I become the most confident Spanish speaker. <laughs> like when I'm living <laughs> here in Peru, I get nervous to speak Spanish and I'm afraid because it's everybody else's native language. And mm -hmm. so when I'm in the United States, it's not a skill because speaking Spanish is a skill. It's mm -hmm. the 
great to speak Spanish. So when I'm in the U.S., I feel proud of it. And I feel like it's easy to show off like, oh, I speak another language. And uh, I was working as a waitress. And when I would have Spanish clients, I would be able to speak to them in Spanish. And that's something that the other waiters couldn't do. So it was definitely it's an advantage in the United States. So I get mm -hmm. really proud, confident of my Spanish in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's um, I know my older son has uh, he works in the restaurant industry and he tells me all the time because he lives in Florida. He's like, I can speak with everyone in the kitchen because most of the people that are in the kitchen staff are Spanish speaking. And, you know, he's like sometimes he makes friends to them and they give him food because they're, you know, it's like, oh, he's my, you know, he's my my people, my culture, you know, he speaks Spanish. So. You know, he's uh, he takes that angle, even though he, you know, he's obviously he was born here and he's, he's his second language. But he tells me that all the time that he, uh, you know, he tries to practice his Spanish and he's the one that, that tries probably to, to practice his Spanish uh, more. He calls my mom often to more of practicing uh -huh. his Spanish, etc., to make sure he kind of uh, kind of keeps those those words, knowing that my mom is going to use very, you know, old school Spanish. Wow, um, that's great. Good for him. Yeah. So, and then Angela, how how do you? I know you in one of your your videos, you also had um, it was um, I don't know if it was an experiment or something that you wanted to try with your friends. It was you were <laughs> trying to talk to them in Spanish and trying to see, and it's it, it looked like most of them didn't didn't speak any Spanish besides probably yeah. what they the little that they learned in Spanish class in high school. <laughs> uh, but how do they react to the idea or besides what we saw on the video? What was, uh, you know, how, what did they, what, what, what was their reaction? They were excited. I think that to be on a YouTube video and I think for like specifically speaking Spanish to them, like the Spanish part, I think. Well, I could see that they were trying to relate back and they have a very basic level of Spanish. Most people know hola or como estas, donde está el baño o me gusta, <laughs> no sé. But so they know some simple phrases and they get excited. I think everybody loves Spanish because it sounds pretty and so they want to be able to say some words and have fun with it. I, it seems like they have fun trying to speak something of Spanish, <laughs> even if they just know one word. Yeah, um, it's interesting sometimes in when you do uh, take a Spanish class in high school. Um, and I I have uh, some friends, sometimes they maybe they grow up in a smaller town and they say, oh, yeah, I took Spanish in high school. So this is, you know, I know, hola, como esta, mi nombre es, whatever, you know, the small little thing. But interesting enough, their their teacher was not a native speaker. It was, you know, an American person that likely learned Spanish and yeah. they were teaching it, you know, and good for them. Um, but, you know, can you learn, you know, you might be able to learn the language, but not necessarily the culture that way. That's a great point. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah. Um, you know, I think ultimately... Um, Angela, we we have a lot to learn from from all different cultures. You know, we need to always find our our happiness and what makes us happy. You know, our our mm -hmm. actions, what we believe, our family. You know, we need to learn from our mistakes. So if we make our mistakes, not even even by saying the wrong things, or or we just need to learn from 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 the mistakes we make in order to become you know better people. I think for the most part. Uh, education it's key and when I say education I don't mean going to school to get your MBA I mean learning about different cultures learning about different people learning about different things um, yeah I, I myself I'm a, I think uh, I didn't know much about the Middle Eastern culture and and my wife mm -hmm. is seems to be kind of like a lot of the Middle Eastern so she's taught me a lot about the you know even though she's not um, Middle Eastern mm -hmm. but She's taught me a lot about the culture. So when we went to a Middle Eastern uh, culture, I when I was I would hear the the praying over the PA system in the middle of the day. I knew what to expect. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I knew the little words here and there and what to say. Uh, yeah. And it was uh, definitely interesting. And that thing, that's what I mean by education is I think is to learn about these 
uh, other people, you know, American, Latin America, European, Asian, it, it doesn't matter, you know, we can always learn from each other, we can always learn from all the different cultures. Yeah, and as you were saying, um, learning from our mistakes, I think a wonderful point to add to that is to make mistakes and it is okay to make mistakes that we're always taught mm -hmm. if you're going to fail at something don't do it but failing is necessary to ever be able to accomplish anything and so we can make mistakes and then we learn from our mistakes which is everybody i need to it's so important to learn from our mistakes <laughs> so mistakes are, good. mistakes are good yeah, making mistakes is how we get better, how we become a better person, and that's how we learn. Uh, we need mm -hmm. to learn from our mistakes, and that will make us better, better people. Um, so for everyone listening, again, if you like this content, just don't forget to subscribe. The, you will find this podcast in the Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. If you look under the words, are you caught in the middle of two of two cultures, you will find the podcast. Angela, was this was the uh of you know thank you it was a great great experience to do this and to kind of learn more about you to for everyone listening to be able to learn more about you hope you know so they can follow you on your social media on your youtube videos you know do you have anything big come uh any new videos upcoming yes yeah, so we've actually been recording quite a bit so there's a lot of very exciting videos to come and uh, thank you so much for showing an interest in my story. I really appreciate it. And for giving me this opportunity, Eddie, thank you so much. Well, thank you. And for everyone listening, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll be back soon. Thanks.